Hi there, welcome to QA Box and this new series about mastering XPath for UI automation testing. Okay, so in this video, we are going to talk about XPath access. At times, there are situations when we have elements which have got no attributes and even their text is not consistent. So there is nothing against which we can identify those elements. Then XPath access come to our rescue. So with the help of relationship between element nodes, we, are, we can identify them. So you have a context node and then you trace down the relationship to reach to the target node. That's how you are going to identify that. And in the first video on XPath introduction, we talked about that these nodes have some kind of relationship. So we are now going to take advantage of this relationship and identify our elements so that we can interact with them at a later point of time. So an access represents, represents a relationship to the context node and is used to locate nodes relative to that node on the tree. XPath access comes in handy when the exact element tag name or its attribute value are very dynamic and cannot be used to locate an element. In this case, locating element after traversing through child, sibling, or parent is our approach. Okay, so if we look at this right graph, right, and in this case, this I is our context node, and we are going to traverse this tree from this node. So, what are the different access available in XPath? So, there are 13 access in total, but we are going to work on these. Uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So we're going to use this 11 axis to understand. So this is our context node and we can also call it as self. So self indicates the contact node itself. It can be abbreviated as a single period. Okay. Then the next is following. So following indicates all the nodes that appear after the context node so this is my context node so anything that appear after it is called as the following node except any descendant attribute and namespace codes so these are descendant in this case so this will not be shown or reflected in the following so we're going to see example of it and then things would be more clearer so following sibling now this i has got two siblings right because they have a common parent now this g is following i and hence it's called as following sibling this becomes then the preceding sibling okay and parent so the parent of i is e and in a tree you know a node can have maximum one parent okay so now E has got a parent C and C has got a parent A. So for I, E is the parent and E, C and A, they are the ancestors. Okay. Same way, if we now look at the child part, all right. So I has got two children, H and J, right. And then they have got further child. So H has got the child K. So if we have to now find the descendant right so children and their children will become the descendant of i okay so now let's do a little reading on this so following sibling indicates all the nodes that have the same parent that is important the same parent as the context node and appear after the context node in the source document preceding indicate all the nodes that precede the context node in the document except any ancestor right in case of following you know we had this exclusion for descendant attribute and namespace in case of preceding also we have the exception for ancestor attribute and namespace nodes preceding sibling indicate all the nodes that have the same parent as the context node and appear before the context node child indicate the children of the context node so if an XPath expression does not specify an access, this is understood by default. Since only the root node or the element node have children, any other use will select nothing. Descendant indicates all the children of the context node and all their children and so forth. 
descendant or self the only thing is you have all the descendant plus the the node itself is also there parent indicates a single node that is parent of the context node it can be abbreviated as two periods ancestor indicate all the ancestors of the context node beginning from the parent node and traveling through the root node right we saw this here okay so ancestors include your parent node as well and then finally ancestor or self it indicates a context node and all its ancestor including the root node now here's the practice exercise that we are going to use and we are going to open this okay and now if we open the console of uh, the, the element dom section now if, if you start looking at this this particular input element it has got only one attribute which is type and has got the value text okay so i am working on chrome and if i just use this property input and then type is equal to text so how do i have to write that start from anywhere within the document and for that we know that we use relative xpath right so we're going to do this and then we are going to say input that will select all the input element on this page but we are saying whose type is equal to text the type is an attribute hence we have to use at symbol and we are going to say type equal to text and still there are four elements so we cannot identify it but this name text is unique right on this page so we can use the text method here right so we're going to say text method and that is going to be let's say name so now i can easily identify this now this is big this this input thing is a sibling of this it's a following sibling because they both share the same parent so if you do now following sibling and this is how you are going to use all the access so you are going to use these rights whether it's a parent child following sibling preceding sibling preceding right uh, descendant ancestor ancestor or self everything right so you write that then you use to colon right and then you're going to provide again the tag so in the tag part we saw that you know we can use all right or we can go specific and pass in the provided tag so in this case because there's only one sibling so you can pass either all or you can go specific and say hey the, the sibling is of type input now you can easily identify it so now you can see we started from this node so that is our context node and from here we reached this node right and now we can interact with that so there are a few examples that we are going to do and we are going to now start with <coughs> self okay so let's understand the self part so what are we going to do with self so we are going to find sections uh, div from itself okay so let us find the div section so this is a div and which has got, got the class section so how are we going to refer to this so we are going to say div and this has got a class attribute which has got the value sections okay so now okay so sorry i just entered two quotes okay so now we can identify this control right and if i just want to stay on this so this is my context node so uh, self is referring itself right how can i refer to this node itself i can say dot right so now you can see that it's pointing to itself is there other way uh, because uh, this is a shortcut right so the the real way is self and you can say this right and you can do node so now also you could see that we are ref still referring to the same node okay so there are two ways you can use this or you can use the shortcut one which is just dot so this is how you are going to use self not very helpful good to know right and the next one is following right so what are we going to do so we're going to find all the divs following the div which has got this class section so how are we going to do that so for that 
it is going to be okay all the div after that right let's let's pick the back so we are going to say back okay so this way now we can identify this and we have to use following right so we're going to say following and if i do all so this is going to find all different nodes so element text and everything but we have to find all the following divs so if i say this so i have got seven right so let's check that out this is one two three four five six and seven so we have got seven right so now if you could see that following right so we started from here it checked for the sibling all right so this is the sibling div and this is another sibling but then the sibling uh, has got these divs inside that and it is able to identify all of that right so that's how you are going to use the following so next one is following sibling so find all the sibling divs which follow this div which has got the class back right so then all you have to do is you're going to say sibling and now see you see only two so sibling is working at the sibling level and it is not checking the children of the sibling okay earlier without this we were seeing seven right so because these five belong to this div right so they these five are children of this div so with following we can find all but if we do the sibling so we are only going to check those nodes which have the common parent and in this particular case the common parent is right this body okay so that's about following sibling now let's talk about the preceding sibling so the example we are going to use is find all the divs preceding the label password right so this is my label right so what i want to do is i want to find all the divs preceding from label password all right so let's let's write that up so we're going to say now what do we want to start from label and we are going to identify it with the help of text method so we're going to say text method equal to and we are going to say password so now we have reached we have identified this control okay now I want to find all the preceding div. So what I can say, preceding div. Okay. So now you could see that we can find six, right? So we started from where? We started from here, right? The first one, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, and sixth one. Okay. So it is finding the divs beyond its parent, right? Hierarchy. So it has uh, moved to the sibling of uh, its parent right so that's about preceding but if you do the preceding sibling right so example we are going to use is find all the sibling divs from label password okay so now what you have to do is uh, this is going to find the label right but you have to find the uh, sibling of this div so you have to go a level up and for that you are going to say parent div right so now this is being identified and then you can say preceding sibling and you provide div okay so now you see three this is how you are going to find the preceding sibling okay so let's check the one two and three all right so these are the three preceding sibling for this div so next one is child so let us find the child elements of html so this has become the parent and these are all the child so how can we find that so we have seen that we can do it like this okay but now we are we have to use access so how can i achieve the same using access so i'm going to say child and then html so you see the same result that's how you can use this and that's why it was mentioned that if nothing is mentioned right then by default it's your child access that comes into picture okay next one is find h2 of div with 
ID demo. <coughs> Excuse me. So here is the div, and we have to find this H2. So how can we write this up using the access, right? And you'll say that you know it's going to be div, okay? And then uh, this div has got the ID equal to demo, right? And then we can say uh, h2 so it can identify that but we have to use access here and again it's very simple if nothing is specified it's child by default okay so you could see you get the same result okay so the next one that we have to use is descendant so find all descendant div with the body tag okay so all descendant from the body tag uh, so how are we going to find that so we're going to say so we to start with body all right so we're going to say body and then descendant div okay now you could see that now it has found all nine so it uh, travels through the immediate uh, children first and then the children of those children so they are four divs right at the at the children level and then there are five div inside this and therefore we are seeing nine so that's how descendant work now if you say descendant or self right so let's see if i can include this body part so for that what you have to do is you have to say descendant or self and then you will find all the elements now this is how we are going to see it but let's uh, make it uh, more understandable so let's pick a different case so we're going to say find all descendant node within form including form so let's start it from here okay and include this as well so we are going to say descendant or self uh, so you're going to start from form and we are going to say descendant or self and then div okay so they are uh, okay we're going to say all right so now it includes everything okay but if i say descendant only right so it has got 17 nodes inside it okay if i say descendant all right uh, and then now you see 16 because because then form is excluded but if you keep that right uh, you see that this one is also selected this is the first one so that's a difference between descendant and descendant or self ancestors so um we have already covered the parent node in one of the example but let's let's take one more example of parent um so let's uh, find this x path and then i'll explain that so we are going to say label uh we are going to use the name label okay and how can we find that out we're going to say text function and then it is equal to we are going to say name okay and i want to find the parent of of this the parent of this is this div right so how can i find the parent of this so i can say parent using access right uh, and we are going to say div so now you could see that i can easily find this the other way i can do is i can say all because because we know that there's always one parent so in case of parent you can you know just provide the either the tag or you can go for asterisk because in all cases there's always be one parent okay what else can we do in here so instead of uh, this we can use the um, shortcut and we can say this so now also it is able to find this one all right so next one is ancestor so find uh, all ancestor div with form tag okay so you have to start with form so all ancestor of div tag right so these are all ancestor of div tag so we are going to start with form okay and we are going to say ancestor okay and the format is simple and straightforward so now you could see there are three okay and and you could see that these html body and div so these are the three uh, ancestor of this thing right so this is the parent then this has got this parent and the body is a child of html right so it has got three ancestor so if i say ancestor um, or self right now you could see four so it is going to consider uh, itself as well okay so form now you could see there are four uh, in the previous example 
what, what you can also do is so instead of just saying everything you can specify which ancestor we are referring to so we have got html right we have got body and we have got the div so you can go specific as well depending upon what is being required right so these are the different x's that will help us in identifying the targeted element from the context node following these excesses all right uh, let us uh, see one more thing now and then we'll conclude this so we have uh, the similar methods in css as well and if you can go uh, to uh, mdn compare c xpath with css then you will see that you know these are the xpath feature and you've got the equivalent css selector right so for ancestor parent and preceding sibling access we have has selector then we have attribute selector in all cases child combinator descendant and descendant combinator uh, so i've already created a video uh, on learn css selectors in 17 minutes so you can uh, open youtube uh, and then go to channel and qa box let's test so that will this is my channel name so you can go to the playlist and you can see this element selector here and i've talked about learn css selector in 17 minutes and i've covered all these so that's about path access thank you so much